was born. What, what is a fabric fiber? Where does it come from? How is it made? What is good fashion people? It is your curly hair brown boy, The Prince, and welcome back to another great video. So guys, I hope you guys are ready for that good fashion knowledge because today I will be talking about fibers, right? Fabric fibers. So if you guys are ready, let's hop right into today's video. Okay guys, to get started, we're gonna start off with the simple question of what is a fiber, right? So a fiber is a long, thin, flexible, hair-like structure that is manipulated to make textiles, right? So we use fibers to make fabric or textiles. And so fibers can be divided into two different categories. We get natural fibers and we get man-made fibers but in today's video I'll be only talking about natural fibers and in my next video I will continue talking about fibers and I will discuss the man-made fibers okay so fibers can take two different types of form staple fibers which are short fibers usually natural fibers and then we get filament fibers which are these long continuous fibers which are usually man-made fibers with the exception of silk because silk is the only filament fiber right so I'll put up an image right here so that you guys can visually see the two types of forms that fibers come in and have a better understanding of it so now moving on to natural fibers so natural fibers are grown or developed from the ground or are harvested from animals. So we get two types of natural fibers, plant fibers and animal fibers. But it is only in some plants that we can actually ext extract the fibers and use them. We cannot get fibers from all plants and not from all animals. It's only in certain plants and certain animals. So we categorize plant fibers from where we extract the fiber from. So either from the stem, which is called a bast, the leaf, or the seed. And now I'm gonna tell you some shared characteristics of plant fibers. So the fibers occur naturally within the plant from either the bast, which is the stem, the seed, or the leaf. Plant fibers wrinkle easy, and they are cool to wear. So these are usually our summer type of fabrics that we would use. They do not generate any static electricity and can withstand high amounts of heat. These plant fibers are also easier to take care of than animal fibers. So those are some characteristics of plant fibers that they all share. And I'm gonna tell you guys some important plant fibers, right? So now I'm going to tell you guys some of the most important and most used plant fibers. And we're going to start off with linen or also known as flax, right? The flax fiber is taken from the bast or the stem of the flax plant and are about 13 to 33 centimeters long and are most commonly known for as a luxurious fabric. Linen is a commonly used fabric and also a very pop popular fabric that is used in most homes. It is one of the oldest fabrics and scientists have traced, it, have traced this textile back to prehistoric times. It was mainly produced across Europe and North Africa and was originally spread all along with the rise of the Roman Empire. And now a few characteristics of linen. So linen is highly absorbent and can absorb up to 20% of its own weight. It is a strong fabric and can be machine washed and it's actually the second strongest natural fabric right under silk. It, it is thermoregulated which means that it pulls heat away from the body and into the fabric this is why it is a cool fabric like I said and is best for summertime use it is comfortable and does not generate static electricity so 
So that is linen, a very commonly used natural plant-based fiber. Now we're gonna move to our second one, which is cotton. The cotton fiber is extracted from the seed. So I'll put up an image and as you guys can see, the cotton seed is this big ball of um, cotton fiber. So the cotton fiber is about one to six centimeters long. So that is not long at all. And as I said before, it is a staple fiber because it has such short fiber strands. You know, I'm just sitting here and I'm just thinking about, you know, how interesting it is, how you can take something like cotton, because just look at it, just look at this picture. It's this ball, this little bundle of white hair. Because if you would look at it, it'd just be like white hair. Why is this plant, why does this plant have hair? You know, but it was so amazing how we could take that. And like I said, cotton fibers are really short, so they're one to six centimeters long, but we managed to, you know, weave that and turn that and manufacture it and produce it and make these long strands of fibers and turn that into textiles, like fabric, and turn that fabric into clothing. How crazy, you know, what type of innovation and creativity do you have to have to look at this white ball of hair and be like, I'm pretty sure I can do something cool with that, you know? It's, it's pretty amazing. It is the most commonly used plant fiber used all around the world for so many different types of items, objects, clothing, furniture, all sorts of things. So um, cotton plants are indigenous to s several parts of the world but are both in India, Pakistan and Mexico, Peru regions. Cotton cannot be grown in cool climates, therefore it's not able to grow in places such as Europe. Widespread use of cotton began way back in the 17th century, back when um, the British Empire was importing cotton growing their empire, right? And we all know this played a huge and major role in the slave trade. Right, as cotton was um, becoming more popular and needed, there was an increased demand for slaves. And so this played into the next step, which was the American Civil War. So as you guys can see, cotton plays a really big and important role in our history. And when you think about the history of cotton, it's amazing to think how this one seed, this one fiber of a plant could impact history on the scale that it did because when you think about it in a way you know cotton was at the center of you know the slave trade because um, the British needed more slaves to harvest more cotton no cotton no need for more slaves but there was cotton and so because of it they imported many slaves and put so many people through all that you know hardship to gather more cotton and more cotton for the British Empire to become richer, wealthier, and to be able to produce more clothing, more luxury. It's, it's absolutely, it's, it's crazy and it's amazing to think how this one fiber played such a huge and impactful role in history. Just this one plant basically changed history. So guys, how interesting is that? You know, it's so interesting to know these type of things. And if you did not know that previously, then come on guys, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Just smash that thumbs up button if you, did know, if you didn't know that. And now for some of um, cotton's characteristics. Cotton is a matte fabric that creases very easily, just like linen. As I said before, some of the general plants um, plant fiber characteristics is that they crease easily. So just like linen, cotton creases quite easily. Cotton is quite versatile and is also quite a strong fabric. It is quite comfortable and soft as we feel with our cotton with our cotton t-shirts, cotton blankets, some of us have pillows made of cotton, so we have all felt that it's quite comfortable and soft. Cotton is not dye fast, which means that when you dye cotton fabric, it does not hold very well. So every time you wash it, a little bit and a little bit more of the color fades. So as we know with our t-shirts, as we wash them more often, slowly but surely, the color starts to fade, 
normally very bright color t-shirts very quickly become dull after you know a few weeks to months of washing it so cotton is one of the most used fabrics in the world and it's also one of the most affordable fabrics as we know it is made up of most of everything we wear and buy and so it is quite cost effective quite cost efficient to buy cotton um, cotton goods so guys if you didn't know any one of those characteristics then guys please sub to the channel i make all sorts of content just like this one information based content i also make diys so guys if you enjoy that type of content please sub to the channel guys help support me and grow my channel so that i can continue to make videos just like this one so now we'll be moving on to animal fibers. So like I said, there are two types of natural fibers, plants and animal fibers. So animal, animal fibers come from the fur or hair of animals or wool, like an example of sheep that are shaved off from them. The only exception with this is silk, as silk comes from the silkworm, the cocoon that it creates. That's where silk comes from, so it does not come from any hair or fur of any animal. Most animal fibers are staple fibers, so like I said, the short ones, right? Except for silk, which is the only filament fiber. And the hair and fur of these animals are basically made of proteins. Now I'm going to give you guys some of the characteristics of animal fibers. So some characteristics of animal fibers are that animal, animal fibers do not wrinkle easy. So they do not wrinkle easy as we know like fur coats, wool, um, wool jerseys and stuff, they don't really wrinkle. They kind of keep their shape very well. Animal fibers are also a lot warmer, especially our heavier fabrics. And these are the fabrics that we use for winter. So we have, you know, fur coats, wool jerseys, and normally these type of fabrics are what we use mostly in our winter times to keep us warm. When washing animal fabrics, you should take care with it because then some of them cannot, are not as durable as our plant-based fibers. So you need to take care of it and make sure that you wash it well so that it can last a long period of time. And an animal fibers are more expensive than plant fibers. I'm not exactly sure why it's the reason of this, but I believe it's in the production process of turning hair, um, hair fibers into actual clothing. Now we're gonna go on to some important um, animal fibers that you get most commonly. So the first one we'll be talking about is silk. So silk does not come from any sort of animal hair or fur, but it comes from the mulberry silkworm. So silk is a product first produced in China from the filaments of the cocoons of the silk worm. It became a staple source for income for the small farmers and as weaving techniques improved, the reputation, the reputation of the Chinese silk spread so that it became highly desired across the empires of the ancient world. You know guys, it's so crazy to think how you know, something so small, a little ins um, insect that creates silk, right? This thread-like thing to create its cocoon. And then we as humans, we looked at that, we took it and we turned it into fabric. We threaded it and all that and turned it into fabric. And how that, that one element, silk, how it has such a huge impact on China. It literally helped build China's economy back in those days. Every farmer was farming silk and turning that into fabric and weaving it and you know producing silk to help build the economy. And silk was such an important part back then um, that you know it, it built one of the greatest trading networks which was the Silk Road which connected East Asia, Europe, India and China. All of those countries connected just based on one product alone, silk. One fiber how amazing is that how it that one fiber has such a huge impact and basically changed china and at the time you know it was that was it it was all about silk 
all about producing silk clothing and exporting it, importing it, you know, making it women, children, you know, families would, would produce that as the income for that household. You know, when I think about these things, they're so interesting to me. I find them so amazing. And it's like, wow, just imagine everyone in your house is just there making silk, making silk, you know? It, it's really, it truly is amazing. So some characteristics of silk. It is lustrous, meaning that it is shiny, it is very smooth, and it just has this luxurious feel to it. So if you felt silk, you know how it feels. It's so smooth, it feels, it just feels so nice. It feels luxurious, you know, it just feels expensive. Um, dyed silk fabrics hold their color really well. So when you dye a silk fabric, it really comes out very bright and it does not wash out as easily as cotton. It can really hold its color for a long period of time. Silk's lightweight fabrics are cool, but their heavier weight fabrics act as insulation and actually traps heat in. So that's pretty interesting as the lightweight is cool, but the heavier weight actually holds warmth in. I thought that was very interesting when you think about it. So wool is the next animal fiber I'll be talking about and wool is most is commonly used all over the world. We have wool sweaters and jerseys and all sorts of knitted scarves made of wool. So wool is made from the fleece of sheep as we know and it's quite easy to use. Wool has been used as clothing for millennia but way back to the first caveman who killed his first sheep and wore its fur as clothing. And as civilization grew and became better, farmers started differentiating between food sheep to wool sheep and started growing wool sheep and harvesting its wool to make clothing. And so, wool has become less important after the invention of man-made fabrics and now is um, and it's now you is now categorized as a luxury fabric and its use and production has become more sustainable. And so guys, you know with wool, I don't know if any of you guys have ever actually felt a sheep and felt the wool of a sheep while it's still on the wool, not in on your jerseys, while it's on the sheep. So when I went to uh, my friend's farm, he owns a farm, and we went to go play with the sheep. See, with all the animals and I got to play with some <laughs> I got to play with some sheep. I even got to hold sheep's legs don't ask me what I was doing but um, we were busy catching sheep and I got the opportunity to actually hold the sheep and feel the sheep's wool and you know on the sheep it's quite soft but it's also quite coarse it kind of feels rough when it's unprocessed it actually feels quite rough but it does feel almost soft at the same time because it's it's not hard, it's soft, but it feels almost rough before it, um, before it undergoes, you know, it's processing. And so it's pretty interesting to think that, you know, this coarse, soft, um, which you call it fur of, or it's not called full fleece of a sheep is turned into what we wear as warm clothing. You know, I find it so interesting. Wool is a matte fabric that is quite elastic and flexible. Wool can be dyed and holds its color. So wool fabric that is dyed is quite vibrant and holds the color so it does not wash out quite easily. Wool fabrics are considered to be heavyweight fabrics and insulate heat. So these are our fabric, um, these are our winter fabrics that we use. If taken care of properly, wool can be quite durable and last a long time. And our last characteristics of wool is that some people are actually allergic to wool. Whereas with plant-based fibers, nobody is allergic to cotton or linen. But with, when it comes to your animal-based fibers, like wool, people can actually be allergic to it. So now you guys know more about fibers and a quick little review. We now know what is a fiber, the two different types of categories between natural and man-made. And in natural fibers, we know the two types of forms that they come in, filament and staple. We also know about the two types of natural fibers, plant-based fibers, 
and animal based fibers. So guys, I will be doing man-made fibers in my next video basically part two to this video in next week so guys be sure to be subbed and have your notifications on so that you don't miss that video i'll be doing it pretty much the same um format as this one going through the characteristics and about two or three of the most important and most used man-made so if you guys enjoyed the video if you learned something new then please guys be sure to drop this video a nice big like just smash that like button guys it helps let me know that you guys enjoy my video and if you're new to the channel and you enjoy knowledge based videos like this about fashion about fashion fabrics sewing all these type of things then guys be sure to sub to the channel because that is exactly the type of content I make on my channel. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Keep living your passion. Bye guys.